Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give you an introduction, a brief overview and a quick tutorial on some of the things that Melodyne does. Now, if you're a singer or you record any kind of vocals, trust me on this, you're going to need Melodyne. Top recording studios around the world use this as their secret weapon for perfect vocal tracks. I'm just going to quickly show you the Melodyne website. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go over and have a look at it to see exactly what this software does. They've got a great help section here and I recommend that you click on these videos by Rich. He goes into more detail and some of the more intricacies of what Melodyne does with these short video tutorials. They're really good. There is a free 30 day trial version and if I just click on the shop tab I will show you here that there's three different versions of Melodyne. The Essential, the Assistant and the Editor at 99 euros, 249 and 399. For most of us the Essential at 99 euros or the Assistant at 249 euros will be perfectly fine especially if you only do vocals but again I'll put a link in the description below so you can have a look at the differences for yourself. Okay, having said that, it's always best to try and nail the best possible vocal performance you can with great emotion or passion, with fantastic timing and great pitch, all those things. Even making a comp out of several takes before running it through Melodyne. Okay, so Melodyne works as either a plugin or a standalone piece of software. So here I'm going to be using it in Logic and I'm choosing the ARA option for the plugin, which is the Audio Random Access which is an audio plugin extension like VST and it simply allows them to exchange a greater amount of audio information with the door. Now if you use Logic already you're probably thinking why don't I just use FlexPitch because it's built in after all but for me FlexPitch is no good in fact I would even go as far as to say it's rubbish. I love Logic as a door it's fantastic but FlexPitch is not one of the things I use within it. Just the act of opening FlexPitch can introduce some nasty digital artifacts and it often does and I've never been able to edit more than just two or three sentences before FlexPitch will actually introduce a popping noise or a crackle or some other nasty horrible digital artifact that you can hear and it actually degrades the quality of the vocal track too whereas Melodyne doesn't, it retains all the quality, it doesn't degrade it and on top of that Melodyne just does so much more anyway. Okay, so here I've got a couple of audio files that I've sung in just so I can use to demonstrate Melodyne. I'll just play you um, the beginning of this first one. Okay, I'll turn the click track on for this as well because um, most of the notes that I sing are syncopated. Not many of them actually land on the beat. This is just a couple of sentences from a song that I wrote a couple of years back, uh, but just have a listen. A billion in the bank, not a single person left to shank. Okay, I'll turn the metronome off. So again, we have a billion in the bank, not a single person left to shank. Okay, and the other audio file that I've got here is just me singing the first uh, couple of sentences from the Oasis song Wonderwall. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. By now, you should have somehow realized what you got to do. Okay, so they're the two tracks that I'm going to use to demonstrate Melodyne, just short little phrases. So if I go and click on the Melodyne plugin, the first time you click on the plugin, like any other plugin, Melodyne will analyze that audio and it will basically interpret it as this. It literally only takes a couple of seconds to analyze the whole track. Now, these slug like shapes actually represent the notes and the wavy lines inside them represent variations within the note pitch, such as vibrato. Okay, so let me just play this so you can um, see it on this um, plugin. A billion in the bank. Now, there you can hear that I'm singing a billion in the bank. And if I actually click on these notes, then you'll hear that song note as well. A billion in the bank a billion in the bank so there we go now some of these notes are a little bit out of tune this first note here should be an e now down the left hand side we've got this piano keyboard with the corresponding horizontal lines so that you can see where the note should be so this first song note instead of it being bang on e it's actually halfway between e and e flat so i am singing it a little bit flat now there's a couple of ways that i can get this note into tune i can double click it and that will basically snap it to the nearest note. Now it's actually put it too flat, 
I'm just going to undo that. Now, that's my fault because I've obviously sung it closer to E flat than I have to E. So when I double click it, Melody is just putting it there. Um, another way of getting it into the exact um, center of this E is by holding down the option key and dragging it uh... like that. Because as I drag, uh... that's what happens. Also, another way of doing it is you can double click it, but then when it snaps it to the wrong note, you can just click it without holding any um, option key and just drag. Uh, because then it drags in complete steps. Uh, Whereas if I'd have left it here where it's slightly flat and tried to just drag it without holding down the uh, option key, we get this. Uh, so it'll snap it, but this time it's going to snap it and make it sharp. So I'm just going to double click it and then uh, drag it to where it should be. So that's one way of getting a note into pitch. Another way is to simply select a group of notes or select all of them and double click. So when I do that, it's going to snap all those into place. Now, if we, if we have a listen now, we have a billion in the bank. That's fine. Some of these notes are a little bit out. So if I just double click those to put those in and maybe double click that one. A billion in the bank. Not a single person left to shank. OK, that's sounding pretty good. Maybe that one can come down a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And this one and this one just double click in here. Now let's have a listen. A billion in the bank, not a single person left to shank. There we go. That's all sounding pretty good. Right, so I'm just going to show you a couple of other quick things here. You may have noticed these little vertical lines at the beginning and ending of some notes here. That is sibilant. So if I just click up here for a second, over here on the left we've got this little checkbox, and if I uncheck it, they actually disappear. And if I check it, it actually brings them back again. So that is basically just sibilant. So that is where I'm singing notes beginning with S. So I'm, I'm getting notes like shh, sh, sh, sh. It's those kind of sounds. That's what they represent. It's not actually note. Now, we all know that sibilance is the enemy when it comes to vocals, but you don't want to get rid of them entirely because it shows that we're human, but they shouldn't be front and center stage either. So the volume of the sibilant parts should be reduced. Now, a lot of people would just use a de in their door. I'm not a fan of using de simply because it affects the whole tonal range of every sung word. Uh, a lot of professionals will actually slice out all these little um, sibilance parts with the S's and the sh and that kind of stuff. They will just move them down onto a separate track and then reduce the volume of that track just for the sibilance parts. But in Melodyne, it's really easy. So if I just um, double click here to get rid of the loop, which we can do within Melodyne, as you can see, if I double click on this bit here, it brings up the loop bar and in Logic, we have it there. So I can actually click it in Logic to get rid of it, or I can double click it here and basically put it where I want to put it. Let me just drag that back out there like so. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is show you how this sibilance tool works so i'm just going to start it from here so just have a listen to it where we have the s's coming in here not a single person left to shank so we've got the s of single and from person and shank here again not a single person left to shank so if i want to reduce the sibilance for all those all i have to do is drag over them and then come up here to the sibilance tool which is here sibilance balance and then if I click on any of these little vertical line bits and drag up or down, it's going to adjust all of them. So if I take this middle one, for example, and drag down, you'll see that they all came down. So have a listen now. Not a single person left to shank. Now that's maybe a little bit too much. So if I just undo that and just this time, I'm just going to drag it about halfway. To about there. Not a single person left to shank. That's sounding much better. So that is how you deal with sibilance. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this one down and come down to this next track and play it without Melodyne. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. OK, that will do for that. Now, if I open the Melodyne plugin, you can see we have it here. Uh, we just turn on the this section one sec there we go i'm just going to bring in a loop right to the end of this part here 
Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. Right, OK, so looking at the beginning here, I can see that some of these notes are a little bit out. Uh, that should be a G, so if I double-click it and then drag it to where it should be. Today is going to be the day that... And some of these notes are a little bit out. They're not all exactly in line. So let me just double click on these and see what happens. It's put them all in the right place except that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to drag that down. And same here. They all need to be in the same place. That's it. That one needs to come up. Let's have a listen now. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to... Oops, that one needs to... Let's have a listen Today now. is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. Okay, so that is all sounding really good. And the next section, if I double click the uh, loop bar to get rid of it for a minute. By now you should have somehow realised what you got. That note there is a bit low, needs to come up. Yeah, I don't do. By now you should have somehow realised what you got to do. Okay, that's sounding okay. Maybe just bring this one down a bit. Yeah. Now this one here, but let me just play this for you. By now you... Okay, now that actually should be a B, but I actually sing up to that. You can see that the, um, the wavy line here, that's me singing up to that note. But here at the beginning, if I just play this bit... Today... And then from here... By now... So that should still be a B. It should still be on the B line. But as you can see, there's a, a lot of me sort of rising up into the note. So if I drag this one up... Bye. So if I put it to B where it should be, it will sound odd. Have a listen. To you. Bye now. You sh so we've got this big spike. Now I can get rid of that by simply using the... Where are we? The... Um, pitch modulation tool here so with the pitch modulation tool what this does is it basically reduces the amount of vibrato and waviness within a line so i can bring this down by holding down the option key and dragging Bye. now i could make it totally flat Bye. Bye. but i want to leave a little bit of uh, natural vibrato in there so have a listen now to you by now you should have somehow so now it's in the right pitch it's where it should be but the way i sing by it sounds like a little bit chipmunky have a listen again to you by now we have this by with this weird bit at the end of by now i can get rid of that because this is where the formant tool comes in now the formant tool is basically all to do with the timbre and the color um, and the tonality of your voice, it's all to do with like throat shape and mouth shape, whether you're singing from the, the chest, neck or head, all that kind of stuff. So the formant is not going to change the actual note, but it's going to change the timbre and mouth shape of it. So let me just play it again before I make any adjustment. You. By now you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that formant down a bit. By to about there. Now have a listen back to you by now you should have some Harry so that actually helps fix how that sounds so that's now all in tune and how it should be um, let me just show you something at the end here this um, end note if I want to actually make that longer I'll show you how to do that realize what you gotta do again how to do so if I want to make that note longer and hold it a bit longer I can simply click on the tool up here called the time tool and holding down the option I can just drag the end of the note like this so it would sound like that's what you gotta do and if I undo that it's that's what you gotta do I can make it shorter that's what you gotta do or I can make it longer realize what you gotta do Okay, let me just zoom in on this beginning bit here. And what I want to show you now is if I click here on the pitch modulation tool, it brings up these little yellow handles. And if I hold the mouse near the right hand edge of any of these notes, it turns into a little cross, as you can see. And then what I can do is I can drag these up or down. If I drag it down, this is affecting how one note basically transitions into another. So if I 
put it there, I'm just going to have this nice kind of glissando down into the next note. Whereas if I have it straight, when I get to the end of this song note, it's just going to drop straight into the next note quickly. So if I hover over all these and then just make a, an adjustment like this, just to make them all hard sounding, have a listen to this. Let me just bring back the... Um, there we go. I'm just going to bring this back to the beginning section. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. And then if I change that and make it like this, so they just flow into each other, have a listen now. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. And again. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. And then if I change that to this. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. You can hear that the transition between the notes flows nicer when I make this adjustment. Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. So this just affects how one note transitions into the next as you kind of uh, glissando in and out of notes, if that makes sense. So let me just put that back to there. Okay, just a couple more quick things to show you. The next one is the amplitude tool that changes the volume of any given note. You can make the volume higher or lower. So if I felt this note here was a little bit too loud, I can simply click on the amplitude tool up here and I can reduce that volume. Or make it louder. So we have this. Today is Today is good day Today is good day Today is good day Today is gonna be the day that day Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back Throw back Today is going to be the day that they're going to throw it back to you. OK, so that's just a way you can even out some notes that might be sung a little bit too loud, for example. Now, if you use Apple, you will know that you can just use the Apple Z, Command Z on the keyboard to undo different stages of the edit. So if I undo that and undo that, it will undo things. But if there's something quite far back that you want to undo, but you don't want to undo everything else, you can simply right click on any given note and I could basically go along to pitch and click restore to original or the um, format tool and restore that or the amplitude tool and I can just go back here and just restore that. So if I click it, it's just going to put that one note back. So you can undo individual note history rather than having to continuously click on the command Z button repeatedly until you get back to the stage. Because like I said, you might not want to undo lots of things, but just something individually. So you can do that too. Okay, so that was a brief overview of just a few of the things that you can do in Melodyne, but it does way more than I've touched upon here. Again, I'd recommend going over onto their website and having a click on these videos under the help section that Rich Crescenti has put together uh, because he does a really good job of going into detail and he covers a lot more than what I have here. As you can see here, there's probably about an hour's worth of videos. So if you watch those, you'll get a much better insight into what Melodyne could do. So there it is. That's Melodyne. Can't recommend it enough.